Well, good morning. We just left Lease Cove after making it out of Butte Inlet yesterday, and we're approaching Aran Rapids now at Stewart Island. It's quite a formidable set of rapids. He's getting pushed completely sideways. It can flood up to 14 knots and ebb at 12 or something like that. So we're hoping that we'll be able to get through. We'll let you know how it all goes. We spent the past week floating on the hook in Butte Inlet, a spectacular glacier-carved fjord quite possibly the most incredible place we've ever been. We made a three-part series documenting the adventure, so if you haven't seen it, you'll definitely want to check it out. We've been making our way slowly back towards civilization. Where we're planning on tying up at the community dock and hopefully finding some water and maybe some supplies. But in order to get there, we first have to transit some of the most treacherous waters on this coast. We're approaching Aran Rapids now across Stewart Island. It can flood up to 14 knots and ebb at 12. And slack tide is in about an hour and a half. So we're hoping that we'll be able to get through Aran Rapids at slack and then make it down before Gillard Passage turns to then ebb against us and make it into Big Bay. The maximum current is really dependent upon the phase of the moon in which we're in. And at the moment, we're coming off the full moon um, and there's about a quarter of it left in the sky. So our tidal shift is actually a lot less than it would be if we were to be tackling the rapids at a maximum flood. And that will actually give us a longer window at slack tide to transit through the rapid, which all up is about 0.8 of a nautical mile and then a further mile and a half to Big Bay. Um, so we should, should take us about 20 minutes, I think. And that would give us ample time at slack tide to make it through. Having timed our passage at Slack, the waters of Aran Rapids seemed benign and mundane. But boaters beware. Three flood streams converge here, creating some of the most confused and turbulent waters on this coast. Making the mistake of transiting the rapids in a keel boat at the wrong time, we would have found ourselves in a pretty hairy situation, at the mercy of boiling currents, overflows, and gnarly whirlpools that would make even the most experienced skipper a little green around the gills. Motoring quickly to ensure we made it through before slack ended, dodging logging debris and giving way to the many recreational vessels, we had an uneventful transit through one of the most fearsome tidal rapids here in the Discovery Islands. Nearing the end of slack time, the sea started to revert to their squirrely ways. So we were happy to be safely on the other side, transiting to the public docks of Stewart Island. Imagine that ripping. No. Like, holy fuck. It's wild. We had to go out and get some footage of it on the drone, like, on the flood. Anyway, full speed ahead. After spending a week in the remote reaches of Butte Inlet, it felt a little bizarre to be arriving in the land of mega mansions, super yachts, and private helicopters. After rinsing weeks of salt off and filling up our empty water tanks, we wandered up the community dock to scout out the scene. We had read that Stewart Island is largely private land, home to exclusive fishing lodges and snazzy estates. So with overnight moorage by donation, it's pretty cool this community dock still remains. 
It definitely had eclectic cruiser vibes, complete with a communal barbecue area. Awesome place to chill out and meet other cruisers while enjoying the beautiful views over Big Bay. We were told this place is really busy in the summer months and we had just missed the rush. There's a well-stocked store and post office, laundry and bathroom facilities, and surprisingly good cell service. With the place to ourselves, we enjoyed a nice warm shower, then sat back and enjoyed a gorgeous sunset over the bay. Early the next morning, we set out on foot to explore the island. Those would have been some nice trees. They would have been some pretty, pretty big cedar. He's like pretty wide that way and pretty wide that way. Shame the big ones aren't around anymore. It is, it is. At least these ones were properly hand logged back in the day. Now they just cut them down in three seconds with a machine. At least somebody got to appreciate it as they cut it down. What a magnificent stump. There's a beaver with very sharp teeth around. There is. It's been slowly clearing this side to put a little lodge, beaver lodge, on Eagle Lake. Back at the boat, it was time to time the tide through the next set of rapids. Casting the lines, we set out from Stewart Island on our way north through Gillard Passage and Dent Rapids. The Yukuda Rapids consist of three separate rapids, which all change through slack at slightly different times. Gillard Passage turns slightly behind Dent, which means that we would have to push through a little current in order to transit Dent while the water is still. Slack is a busy time to be out on the water in the Yucatas. Everybody is bustling about and trying to get through the rapids during the short window when the water is calm. We have officially transited the Yukata Rapid. That was Dent Rapids coming north. And uh, as long as you hit it at slack, it's really not too bad. Still a little bit of weird shifty water, but definitely not the whirlpools and overhangs and all the other crazy stuff that you see at a full flood. We did the thing that we were intimidated by <laughs> and it feels good. Yay, congrats. Congrats. So our plan is to head to Thurston Bay. It's a marine park and should be pretty undeveloped. So there's a couple of anchorages there 
and you can spend some time walking the trails and poking around. We are interested in dropping the hook in Anchorage Lagoon, which is a lagoon and therefore it's pretty shallow during low tide, but we transited the rapids at low tide and now when we get to Thurston Bay, it should be high tide, which would be perfect. So we should be able to get into that really protected lagoon and drop the hook there, which I think will be pretty cool. Neither of us have ever been up here. We've never been to Sonora Island. We're just excited to see what's around the corner. Most people choose Cordero Channel, so that's a much busier route. We're coming down Nodal's Channel and gonna take the path less traveled. Arriving at the shallow entrance to the lagoon nearing the top of a three meter tide, we tiptoed in through the dogleg passage, paying careful attention to the depth soundings. 16.2. With a five foot draft, we had a comfortable amount of water under our keel. You could see the bottom there for a second and you could see the big bull kelp growing. I was worried that maybe it would get caught in the rudder, but we good. <laughs> Inside, we were greeted by two other boats on anchor. Our cruising guide suggested there was room for about four boats. So we scouted the rest of the anchorage to find a spot with enough room to safely swing. With a seven foot drop in the tide overnight, we let out our anchor in about 18 feet, then back down on it to ensure our hook was safely set. It's good. Like whatever this says is not accurate to what the bottom actually reflects. Really? I think it's more just a flat basin. When I did my loop, it was all the same contour. So wherever we swing, it should more or less all be the same. Yeah. We dropped in 20? We dropped in 18. So we're going to lose 7 feet overnight. That should still give us 10 feet of water to be floating around in. We had read about a potential walking track leading from the lagoon to a bay on the other side of the island, where there are supposedly remnants of an old homestead and orchard. So we hopped in the dinghy and rode to shore to explore. There were signs all around that we should probably keep a keen eye out for bears. But we found the trail. Well, that's where the bear went. We'll put on some music. Yep.
We had a very beautiful evening exploring the lagoon. Our cruising guide told us that there's a trail that connects Anchorage Lagoon to Handfield Bay. And so we dinghied over and had a little explore over there. There were tons of salmon jumping, which was really cool. You can actually see them swimming around in the shallows there. We were a bit nervous because we did see some bear prints in the mud. And so we were making lots of noise because the trail meanders through some pretty thick forest. It'd be really easy to sneak up on one in there. Thanks for watching, folks. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Join us next week as we continue our journey north through the Discovery Islands. Transit, our final set of tidal rapids. We approached Whirlpool Rapids here, and I guess we arrived at the maximum flood. There was a big motor yacht coming down the rapid, and he was fishtailing and going one way and the other, and we were just like, no way, let's not do it. And celebrate an exciting milestone. We got through them all. We're technically in the Broughtons now. We'll see you next Wednesday.